Hey everybody, it's Kneecap here, and in this video we have what is hopefully the final set of Retribution Paladin nerfs before the rework goes live in a few days. Um, I say hopefully, because you never know, could be more coming. I did pin a comment on my last video, and I did mention in my last video that Templar Strikes was going to get nerfed. This ability was going to get nerfed, this ability got nerfed the most out of everything, but there's pretty substantial nerfs all around. We'll go through all of them. Now, I also need to address this real quick. I don't know anybody at Blizzard. It is possible someone at Blizzard watches a video of mine or whatever and gets an idea of it. However, I didn't comment on Templar Strikes until literally last night. I had not really mentioned it before, how broken it was. And they did not hotfix all these changes in overnight because I made a video. Uh, I know some people <laughs> think that somehow I have some power uh, to do things. Uh, but if that was the case, you know, you know, maybe more of the good things would happen that I suggest as well. And that doesn't happen. So um, I think you're just kind of like, uh, you know, being unrealistic there. If you think that I have any effect on it, because I do point out things to change for a positive way as well. Um, and yeah, it, I think that's just like confirmation bias. But let's go ahead and go through what these nerfs are and what they mean. What I found in my testing versus what other people found as well. So first... The most important thing is to go through what the actual nerfs are. So it looks like we have a minus 3% aura to all of our abilities. So that's a 3% nerf if it's to every ability, which it appears to be in general. And then we have a little bit larger nerf to consecration in general at 15%. That's not a huge deal. Templar's Verdict. Uh, this is actually buffed. This is like the only buff, right? Unleashes a powerful weapon strike that deals 163% attack power damage. So this is a buff. And this is a single target buff, obviously. And this is why the nerf to single target is not as substantial as the nerf to AoE is with this um, set of nerfs here. We have Blade of Justice. This is changed to holy damage and nerf to some degree. There's people arguing about this. I have not looked into this enough and I didn't have like old stuff to compare it to. I guess I could have maybe found some people's logs, PTR logs, and compared it. Um, there's people saying it's a huge nerf. There's people saying it's a buff because it's mastery now. I have no idea. The the, the Ret Discord is full of trolls and, you know, whatever. Uh, so <laughs> I have no idea. Um, until I'll wait till a simulation comes out or whatever. Um, see. But, like, generally speaking, it's nerfed, but it now is affected by mastery. So, um, you know, maybe, you know, in some way it's it, it's buffed back up, at least a little bit. Blade of Vengeance, uh, Blade of Justice now hits nearby enemies, so the, the cleaving effect of Blade of Vengeance is nerfed as well. Blessed Champion, this is actually a buff. So your Judgment and Crusader Strike slash Crusader Strike Auto Attack slash Templar Strikes now, uh, cleave ability, that cleave damage is actually increased here. Uh, it doesn't make up for the other nerfs, so. though. Burning Crusade, uh, so your AoE abilities, um, instead of doing 10% increased damage, only do 5% increased damage. So that's like a 5%. In many ways, it's not every, you know, but it's Divine Storm, which is your main one. So it's a 5% um, AoE nerf, because you're going to have that talent in almost every AoE build. Crusading Strikes. Crusader Strike replaces your auto attack. Um, they just fixed a typo here. Divine Arbiter. This is nerfed as well. Um, your Holy Strike stuff only deal 5% increased damage. So that's similar to Burning Crusade. So 10% to 5%. So this is a large single target nerf. Again, only offset by that Templar's Verdict buff that they gave us. That's the only thing that offsets this. Um, and then the actual Divine Arbiter ability also... Uh, was nerfed. So the actual damage that that capstone does is nerfed as well. Divine Hammer. Hammer spin around you. Uh, this is uh, nerfed as well. Execution Sentence is nerfed by a decent amount uh, as well. Again, only reason single target is not nerfed as bad is because of that big buff to Templar's Verdict. Expurg is nerfed a little bit. Final Reckoning is in fact buffed. Um, not enough to offset anything, but buffed. There's that final verdict change listed here again. Just Scar's Vengeance, also buffed. Uh, Penitence. This is a AoE and single target nerf. Uh, it's Instead of 15%, it's 10% more damage. And that affects Execution Sentence, Expurg, True Swake, Consecration, and Divine Hammer. So some AoE, some single target. Um, but, you know, just a general nerf there. 
Sanctify. This is another Consecration and Divine Hammer nerf. Searing Light, the capstone on the AoE side, the fire side, is nerfed as well from 250 to 180. Seething Flames, that's the single target Wake of Ashes ability, has also been nerfed. Templar Strikes, this is a huge nerf. This is like the main Templar Slash is nerfed by, you know, 31.1%. Uh, so like just about 31% nerf to Templar Strikes. This ability was way too strong. It also changed the cooldown on it as well, I believe. Um, basically, the problem was, and I did again, I didn't address this until the last video I made. You could just sit there and press Templar Strikes and never be punished for it. Like, you didn't have to put Judgment on your targets. You didn't have to put Expert up on your targets. Uh, you didn't have to really cast Hammer of Wrath at all. You could just sit there and spam that button and use your spenders on both single target and AoE and still do really, really good damage. And so you're effectively a one button generator <laughs> and then just spending off of it. Um, I don't know. I don't think that's good gameplay in my opinion. Maybe some people disagree with me. And yes, you could. There there was better things to do, especially for single target, than just spam that button. But there was almost nothing better to do for multi-target <laughs> than sit there and spam Templar Strikes. So, um, you know, it was broken. It was going to get nerfed. I don't necessarily think all the nerfs needed to be done. I didn't mention any other really nerfs that needed to be done. Uh, but this needed nerfed, and it was. True Swake. Wake of Ashes also causes targets to burn for a nerfed amount of damage. Vanguard of Justice is nerfed from 25% to 20%. Surprisingly, this still seemed to be the better talent to choose, uh, despite this nerf. Uh, to Vanguard of Justice, this affects your Divine Storm and Final Verdict, if you have those either, you know, whether you're doing single target or multi-target. And it also affects Justicar's Vengeance as well. Uh, but this is a four holy power cost. Now, like I said, uh, I still was doing more DPS with it than without it, which is surprising. So it still seems like you might still take that, which means that the builds that I was showing last night aren't necessarily terrible and still, they're just weaker. Uh, Wake of Ashes, again, this is nerfed. Everything about Wake of Ashes is nerfed. So what we see here is a lot of nerfs. We'll go to the game client now. Uh, so what we see is a ton, a ton of nerfs. I think I'm in like an AOE spec here. Yes, I am. Um, so one thing I found interesting in my testing is I actually did the most damage when I didn't have Crusading Strikes or Templar Strikes, and I actually just used Crusader Strike. The reason probably being that Crusader Strike is almost fitting the same bill as Templar Strikes now with the, with the cooldown nerf, like, so you can't just sit and spam it constantly. So you still have the ability to always have, not always, but have Holy Power at a given time. And then the damage was so much less with the Templar Strikes. That it actually just ended up being like better and just kind of playing it like I do on live. You know, the Crusader Strike. Actually, I did the most uh, AoE DPS with Crusader Strike, believe it or not. Um, yeah, a little bit crazy. It wasn't by much. Uh, the second most I did for AoE was with Crusading Strikes. That's the Crusader Strike auto attack. And then the, I actually did the least AoE damage with Templar Strikes. That doesn't mean that's true. I Once again, I always mention this in the videos, but I'm one person doing testing. My results do not mean that they are everyone's results. I could have one talent wrong where I think it's a better talent, but maybe it's not. You know, all these things are possible and, you know, shouldn't be discounted that, that you know, basically I'm not perfect. And that's why at the end of the day, we use simulations uh, when we make our like final final decisions. When, if anyone who makes a guide without at least looking at the simulations, you know, it's probably not a very good guide. So, um, but yeah, that, that was my results. Now... What I also, so I actually ran into, I, I've run into a few Rep Paladins, some people that watch the channel, some people that don't, but I've like met a lot of Rep Paladins on, since I've been on the PTR with all this going on and <laughs> this week. And, you know, I actually had somebody kind of change my mind on the AOE thing. Um, I'll shout him out if I can remember. His, it's Pope, Pope Dad or something like that. Uh, but shout out to him. He helped me out. I, I earnestly asked him a question. I think he was a little bit defensive at first, but I was just asking him like, hey, why is your DPS different than mine? And he actually literally went to a target dummy and did it. He said, he said, yeah, my DPS does fall off a little bit more on live. So it might not be exactly what I told you, but he was, you know, he was pretty, pretty accurate with what he was telling me and he helped me out and he helped change my mind a little bit. So I do think this AOE nerf is overdone. Now I would have probably said that either way, but there's uh, there, here's a reason why. So on a five minute fight, 
on live, you know, I'll do whatever. I, I actually did it with the correct trinkets and it changed my numbers a little bit. But like on a five minute fight on live, I'll do like a hundred and, you know, uh, well, I, I wish I could remember the number exactly, but it's like 150K or 160K or something like that. And then a five minute fight on the PTR, I did, you know, like five to 10K more DPS over a five minute fight. The PTR builds in general are way more consistent damage um, for whatever reason. Like it's it just maybe because there's more chance of air, maybe because there's more procs and stuff on live that you have that can all line up on your opener or something like that. I'm not exactly sure why, but my DPS falls down a lot more over like a five, six minute fight on live than it does on the PTR. Maybe just because the PTR rotation is easier. I'm not sure. Um, I, I'm not sure on that. But that, that is the case. So my damage over a five minute fight is better on the PTR by a little bit on, on AoE. But a good point that that guy made to me is that he, he does his testing over shorter periods of time. And for especially for this PTR build, it doesn't matter. He literally proved that to me. You know, he's like, it'll stay the same the whole time. And he was right. And I, and I kind of knew that already. Uh, but I was still impressed. And uh, uh, on live, and then when he said on live, you know, it, it does dip a little bit more on live. That made more sense to me because sometimes I sometimes I even test for like eight minutes at a time, and so that makes a lot more sense to me that uh, after he said that. But anyways, uh, so that might not actually matter. So for a council fight, this matters, right? So if you're just sitting there blasting on council, maybe a council fight that lasts like six minutes or something like that, then that's very pertinent that the PTR damage is higher. But in Mythic Plus, you're not necessarily doing that, right? In Mythic Plus, you are bursting every pull or whatever, right? In theory. Now, there's two ways to look at this. One way to look at it is on live, on that very first big pull you do with heroism, you'll do more damage on live, most likely. Not necessarily, but most likely you do more damage on live. Because Searing Light is uncapped, I believe. So that could affect your uncapped damage or whatever. And Final Reckoning is buffed. Uh, so I, I can't say that for sure. But on live, you might do more damage on that first big pull than you would on the PTR. The difference, the only difference is you will have your wings up again for like the second pull and the third pull and the fourth pull. Because you're going to be playing the one minute build, most likely for Mythic Plus on 10.0.7. On and so, uh, you know, that second pull, your damage will be higher. With the new stuff most likely unless the pull takes two minutes and you have it up again um if you don't have it up for the second pull then the second pull your damage is going to be higher with the new style and so how does that balance out throughout the dungeon now a, a you know a dungeon where you pull like 40 percent of the trash at the start you know it's gonna fit it's probably gonna favor the live so i could definitely see even saying that this is a nerf from live like lower damage than you're currently doing on live for certain situations and certain types of content. So what I say now, I you know people are accusing me of getting nerfs for rep paladins. Um, so would I say that they over nerfed? I would say yes. So I would say it wouldn't hurt to buff back the AOE back a little bit um, because not only does it pigeonhole you to play certain builds to even be somewhat the same as live. Like, it doesn't allow you too much optionality. We also don't have a lot of cleave optionality. Like, we have cleave buttons, but, like, we can't really choose any single target talents. So our tyrannical boss damage is going to be lower, right? So I, I don't think it would hurt to give a little bit of back of that AoE. I think the AoE was over-nerfed. We'll, we'll see when, like, simulations are out, but every, almost everyone's getting the same exact numbers as me. It's all, like, like a 5 to 10K variance. Like, some people are saying they're, you know, in, like, if, if they are testing at a lower number, it's like 10K higher on live. If you're testing at a higher number, like me, it's like 5 to 10K higher on the PTR. But either way, I think it could use a bit of a buff on AoE. You don't have to overdo it. Um, just a bit of a buff on AoE. And frankly, I think you could just solve it the same way you did the single target and just buff Divine Storm damage. Just buff Divine Storm damage by like 30% or something like that. And then I think you're probably fine in that way it's it's a very easy fix if they choose to do it so this is me calling for a buff and even telling them how they can do it very easily the same way they did the single target so let's talk about the single target so single target is still a pretty considerable buff from live to what 10.0.7 will be as of right now now 
basically, uh, and people, again, people are getting the same numbers as me on this, and it's like, you know, uh, if you're in like max gear, it's like, it was like a three to 4k DPS drop from the last build, but that still puts you at like almost 10k, maybe like 8k higher than what you're doing on live single target. So it's still like a pretty substantial single target game, you know, 10% plus single target gain. Um, I would say, I would say 10% is a nice number, but maybe even more single target buff from live to 10.0.7, even after these nerfs. I think for single target, the biggest thing was, is you could just sit there and spam Templar Strikes, not be punished for it, even though there were other abilities that like should be better in theory, like you weren't really punished for it. Like you could do the, a proper rotation and just spam that button and still do the same damage. And so I think, um, you know, nerfing Templar Strikes again was something that they had to do. Um, I think they did, you know, just very smartly be like, okay, we're just gonna buff your final verdict damage and that way your single target damage isn't so if they didn't do that huge buff what we would see is more of a similar thing where instead of being like a 4k dps loss it's like a 10k dps loss and then you're back to similar numbers as you are in live and so they they buff back that final verdict and i think that really helped a lot with keeping the single target on track as far as the builds I talked about, those are still pretty good builds, essentially. Um, like I said, for AoE, I actually was getting better uh, results without anything. That doesn't mean I was. That doesn't mean I was doing it perfectly, though, right? Like I don't know. Like especially with these changes, like nobody already knew what the proper rotation was, and now with these changes, nobody really knows what the proper rotation is, and they're working hard on it. The people that do that are working really hard on it, so. Um, I think somebody even, uh, who like really runs the API and stuff, I, I believe I saw that they actually got almost the same exact results as I got just from doing my dummy testing on the single target side of things. And so I'm pretty confident about single target as of right now, when, as of this moment, when you go in to the patch on Tuesday, your single target damage will be higher. Just generally speaking, you'll be more tanky, you'll have more movement and you'll have more single target damage in AOE what you're going to have is you're going to be more mobile, more tanky, and you're going to do very similar damage. And it's going to be more sustained like throughout the dungeon. Uh, whereas you don't do, you know, 300 K one pull and then, you know, 85 K without wings, the next pull, it's going to be more like 160 K every pull, <laughs> you know, like if you're like in your, if you're in really good gear or whatever. Right. So it's going to be like a more sustained thing. But like I said, if you do pull a ton of trash at the start of a dungeon, like if you're like an MDI style or you're just with really good players, you're going to feel the nerf more than somebody who's pulling one pack at a time. Somebody pulling one pack at a time might not feel any nerf at all. I, in fact, I would almost argue that if you're just a go through the dungeon, pull one pack at a time, four or five mobs, you'll, you may actually just feel a buff. You may feel stronger. Uh, throughout the dungeon if that's the case if that's what you're pulling so i think that's a very interesting way to look at it too and we you can't really do that without actually i always talk about aoe aoe is very dynamic it changes based on the content you're doing how fast you're doing it who you're doing it with aoe is extremely extremely dynamic and a build could be better for you. you you could do great damage with one build and someone else could do better damage with another build and if you swapped you wouldn't have like the same results like like they would have different results because they're pulling a dungeon differently than you. Um, and everything is very dynamic. I think council fights and raids are like better ways to judge this just because everyone's doing that pretty much the same way. But when you're talking like Mythic Plus, it's too dynamic. That's why the dungeon slice is a terrible way to simulate, in my opinion, on raid bots. They do their best with it, but I don't think it, it can't account for how some random group's going to pull a dungeon, right? So um, it's like... You, you can you can try to make it as generalized as possible, but I just don't know how you would do that. There's too many variables. Somebody dies. You know, there's just so many variables <laughs> in there. Um, but yeah, so uh, overall, like I said, heading into the patch right now, it's it's probably an overall buff in everything, uh, in, in generally speaking. It's definitely a buff in single target, and it's probably like a kind of a buff in AoE, but the AoE is a lot more close to your live damage. And... I think they may have overdone the AOE damage nerf a little bit. And I think they could just easily fix that. They could easily fix that by buffing Divine Storm, putting Penitence back, I think would do a lot, or Burning Crusade, like maybe making maybe these three talents here on the fire side, 
maybe putting those back to higher numbers. You know, you don't have to do everything back. Just do some of the stuff back so that way we feel something stronger in AoE on live than we do currently on live. And it kind of matches like the single target, right? Now our single target needed buffed more than our AoE did. That's also worth saying. Our single target's not that good. So they could be just trying to bring single target more in line with middle ground, kind of how we are in AoE. We're like we're like middle to high, you know, we're like A or B tier for AoE right now on live. I don't expect that necessarily to change. I still kind of expect to be A or B tier on AoE and live. And, you know, like that's just kind of where I, I think we'll be. Um, and I think I think basically the single target is just now going to be, you know, A or B tier, probably like B tier or something, but A or B tier as well. So, you know, instead of being 50 percent instead of, actually a lot of the rankings have read at like 66 you know like the 66 percentile or something like that and maybe now we're up to like the 50 or the 33rd percentile so i think that's i think it's overall a good change i think people are losing their minds a little bit too much about it but i will agree that the aoe nerf was overkill um in a lot of ways and i think that they could make it more interesting and I, I i do feel bad for people who love templar strikes and just being able to press templar strikes and i've noticed this and you know it makes me feel really bad because there's some people who because they could just sit there and press that button a lot and still do really good damage that helped them a lot because maybe they aren't good at the rotation or maybe you know you know maybe they get flustered and they can't press their buttons perfectly in the in a fight or something like that and being able to just spam that one button you know, maybe really help them. And maybe that could be like, make them feel bad as well, because they're like, oh, I'm doing as good a damage as like the top player is with this new ability. And then they nerf the crap out of the new ability. And I get that that feels bad. It should have never been that strong to begin with. Um, and I always think that there's better ways to go about things um, as well. And, you know, it, uh, as I didn't, one last thing I guess real quick before I end this video is that I didn't talk that much about single target. I just mentioned that it's still a bit stronger than AOE. Uh, for single target, I actually got the best DPS still with Templar Strikes. It was barely, uh, Crusading Strikes was like neck and neck with it on my testing. So I, that'll be something that I would, you know, personally want to see the simulations for to see. Um, but I was very close on single target with Templar Strikes and Crusading Strikes. Um, and then when I did, I think I, I don't know if I tried regular Crusader Strike on single target, but I, I was happy enough with the damage. I wasn't that worried about it. Like it wasn't that big of a nerf that I was hyper worried about it. So I didn't test that out that much, but, um, yeah. So you have uh, crusade cru possible crusading strikes for single target, you know, or possible either of those, this talent for single target. As of right now, I think it feels bad to not choose either of these. For AOE, although it is Crusader Strike, so why would Crusader? But there is a cleave option for Crusader Strike as well. Um, so, you know, it might even be a thing where if the, there's not really better talent points to put it in, but you could actually just get rid of Blessed Champion um, and go with, you know, if there were better talent points to put them in, but they're really, truly aren't really better ones to put it in. So, um, it'll be interesting to see. I'll be very interested. I I would not be surprised. So I, I said that Templar Strikes is going to get nerfed in the last video. I was right. That's one thing I am very often, guys, is I am very often correct. That does not mean that I am the one in charge of things. It means that I'm very good at seeing things logically and, you know, have a good understanding of basically how the devs at Blizzard operate. <laughs> That's why I'm right a lot. Not because I have any kind of influence. So it's like a, it's like Bruno from that movie, that Disney movie. Like he's just telling you things that are obvious. They're not happening because of him. Um, but you know, I, I would like to see AOE buff back a little bit, and I think then everyone will be pretty much happy. I think people are freaking out because it's so close to Tuesday. And yeah, well, I think we'll see. Uh, like I said, uh, I was before I went on a diatribe about me being correct. What I was saying is, I think we might see one more tuning pass, maybe like Monday night or something like that. Maybe Monday during the day, maybe tomorrow. But I think we might see one more tuning pass, and maybe they buff back AOE a little bit. Maybe they buff Divine Storm. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see if that happens. We'll see. I'll take credit if we get the buff. So, uh, you know, every, a bunch of people want to blame me for the nerf. If we get a buff back on our AOE. Um, obviously I'll take all the credit for that. So, uh, that's it for this one, guys. As always, I do ask you to please subscribe to the channel because that helps me out the most. And other than that, everybody have a good one.